Okay, I'm here at the north end of Lava Beds National Monument in Northern California um, at a really unique place where uh, geology and history actually combined. Um, I think that's really neat because there's a lot of times in history when you look at it through the lens of geology where you see that the geology made a big difference and was a critical factor in how uh, things played out historically. So we are at the north end of a lava flow here and you can see the, the end of it here. And then just beyond it, you can see these irrigated fields. This was once part of Thule Lake. So this big uh, lake has been dropped due to irrigation and diversions and that. But there was a lake here as little as about 150 or so years ago. Um, and we're going to take a walk into this lava flow area and explain how it ties into an event in human history. So join me here at the north end of Lava Beds National Monument as we go on a little journey together. So the area I'm in is an area called Captain Jack's Stronghold. And to give you a little bit of the historical context, um, one of the great mistakes, tragedies, I don't know exactly how to put it, uh, in the settling of the American West was the displacement and mistreatment of the Native Americans. Um, and that's a whole big can of worms um, that I probably don't have the expertise to fully unpack and discuss. But uh, in this area, in Northern California, there was a group known as the Modoc tribe. And they were, like so many others, forced to move off their native lands here on the edge of Thule Lake and were sent to a reservation. And in the early 1870s, uh, that wasn't sitting well with some of the some of the members of the tribe. And so a group of them came back to this area to reclaim their lands a little bit. And um, the leader, the chief of this group, was known among the whites as Captain Jack. Uh, I can't pronounce his actual uh, given name. But they came back to this area and were able to uh, defend themselves against the U.S. Army, far outnumbered by the numbers of soldiers in the Army, for the better part of the winter of 1872 to 1873. And part of the reason was this landscape, this topography. Um, this lava flow, when it erupted, and I'll have to look up the date and I'll add it to the video, but it flowed into the lake, which again was much higher uh, at that time. And as the leading edge of the lava flow uh, cooled and quenched against the lake waters, um, the lava that was continuing to pour towards the lake, what that caused the lava flow to do was inflate upwards and, um, and start to cool and solidify, but it created this crazy uh, irregular topography like we see here, um, which is not uncommon in basaltic volcanic landscapes. But for example, we have um, over here a really good example of what we call uh, a tumulus, or if it's a plural, we call them a tumuli. And what you'll see here is a big crack in the rock separated by these two ridges. We've got one ridge over here and another one on this side. And so as the lava is inflating, hard to do with both my hands here, as the lava inflates, it actually cracks and moves apart. And so you can see the type of topography that's created with this kind of mini valley running right up the split here. And this was the landscape that Captain Jack was able to fortify with his warriors and defeat parts of the U.S. Army was this kind of landscape. Easily defensible positions, um, a bit of a natural fortress here in this volcanic landscape. They were able to hide some of their people, women and children, that sort of thing, and keep the U.S. Army at bay for several months anyway um, because of this crazy geologic landscape. Just these 
hummocks and pits, um, these tumuli in here, just a re really uh, advantageous position for them to be in if they were trying to, you know, defend themselves from incursions by the U.S. Army. So this again is known as Captain Jack's stronghold. Um, of course, the ultimate end to the story you probably could foresee or anticipate. Uh, eventually, even though they held them off for quite a long time, eventually he was uh, captured. I think some of his own men might have turned him in um, because they had killed quite a few people, including some prominent uh, army officers. Um, he was, I think, hung uh, and or executed somehow. But uh, this place still bears his name and is just an interesting um, situation, I think, where uh, the geology and the human history actually converged a little bit. Um, like so many times in, in, in history, there's so many different times where uh, the geology dictated uh, the outcome to some degree. There's even a branch of geology, I don't know much about it, called military geology, where you look at landscapes and look at how uh, defensible different positions are, um, that sort of thing, to gain some sort of uh, um, you know advantage over your your enemy. So, short little video, but hopefully you found this interesting. Again, at the northern edge of Lava Beds National Monument, um, these lava flows here providing an interesting uh, cover and defensive position for the Modoc Indians as they fought against the U.S. Army. The Army was just trying to get them back to their reservation. Uh, the natives didn't want to. They wanted to stay in their ancestral home, which is very understandable. Um, and so things got testy and violent. Um, but this landscape played a big part in determining how that conflict went. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks for joining me. Again, Sean Wilsey, geology professor, just investigating different geologic landscapes, sharing them with you as best I can, hopefully conveying some information that's positive and helpful and educational to you um, here at the northern end of Lava Beds National Monument here in Northern California. Thanks for joining me and appreciate it.